What's up guys, David one two and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. And today we're going to be looking at the top 10 worst pendulum monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Pendulums are an interesting mechanic that is drastically different than pretty much every other extra deck summoning type mechanic we have, which has meant that it's pretty much changed the way it plays every single new master rule in an attempt to balance out this weird way of playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm going to preface this video with I am not a big fan of the mechanic, so I don't tend to play any of the decks associated around it, so it's actually a little difficult for me to assess a lot of these cards that are only bad because they don't work in the archetype, therefore, uh, even though they themselves in a bubble aren't the worst things in the world. There's a couple on here that are are decidedly only bad because they're useless in the deck they're for. So let me know in the comments below how I do with all of these, because I'm going to do my best guess with... Uh, the quick rundown the Discord gave me for each of the weird ones to see just how close I can get to why maybe one of these players would not want to run one of these. Without further ado, let's get started with number 10. Number 10 is Zhang Shen Magician. This level 4 light spellcaster pendulum monster has the following pendulum effect. Once per turn you can target one face-up XC monster and one face-up monster with levels 5 or higher. That XC monster changes its rank to match the other monster. While you control more cards than your opponent, this thing's scale becomes 4. That second part of its effect uh, by changing it to a scale 4 is simply supposed to be some sort of balancing thing because it is decidedly a negative effect in a deck that has lots of level 4s. As I should remind you, you cannot pendulum summon monsters that are the exact same level as the scale. So they have to be decidedly in between, it does not include the bumpers. And why would you ever want to use that first effect, essentially letting you modulate the rank of a face of Xe monster? Well, it's because you're supposed to use it with this other thing here, so that you can like use a rank for it to, to, to like overlay into something else. It goes with the odd eyes mechanic. This is basically a holdout with the anime with the main character just has a kind of a mush together deck. And in a modern version of Magicians, you do not run this card. Matter of fact, I don't think you ever really would have wanted to run this card. I think if you did, it was just because you didn't have any options other than it. Because it is certainly a wonky mechanic that you really do not need to use in order to go into your various rank 7 things like your, uh, was it Absolute Dragon? Is that the, is that the XC or is that the Synchro? Whatever it is, the play you make Vortex with. Uh, you don't need this. Also, it does have a monster effect that says your opponent takes no battle damage in battles involving this card. And once per turn, you can have this thing target another monster in the field and have its attack modulate to the same attack as the one you targeted. Presumably so you can get over something. I guess. Neither of these effects are useful in the modern build of Magicians, which makes the card that special kind of fun useless where it just kind of falls into obscurity. Number 9 is Super Heavy Samurai, what is it, what the fuck is this thing called? General Coral. <laughs> Level 1 Earth Machine Pendulum Monster with the following pendulum effect. While you have a spell or trap in your graveyard, this thing becomes a scale 4. Again, that's a bad thing. 4 and 5 are probably the two worst scales in the games because they're right in the middle, right dead in the middle of the monster levels that you probably have in your deck, which means that if one of your scales is a 4, you're probably accidentally unable to pendulum summon one half of your deck after that. So that's pretty, pretty obnoxious. One could say that in a super heavy samurai deck, you're most likely not running any spells or traps, so this is kind of a moot point, but it, uh, it is still a thing that makes the card not very good. When one of your super heavy samurai monsters destroys another monster by battle, it can make a second attack. All right, well, that effect is okay. However, it is decidedly not very necessary in a deck that it already has no problem OTK. Furthermore, uh, super heavy samurais really don't I think they only have one other pendulum card, which just means that they, they're not a pendulum deck, so giving them a pendulum card and expecting them to pendulum summon is just a really strange thing for the deck to do. They're not going to run it. And it does also have a monster effect that if you have no spells or traps in your graveyard, again, kind of a moot point, you can tribute up to two super heavy samurais to draw that many cards. Okay, you can only use this once per turn. That's not the worst effect in the world. Again, it's just the deck doesn't need it, so it gets relegated to obscurity. Ugh, Pendulum Monsters have a lot of text. It's gonna make this video, like, freaking stupid long. Number 8 is DD Savant Galilei. Here's a fun one, because I can 100% tell you I have no idea how to play DDDs. <laughs> However, I think I, I think I got it. A scale 1, level 10, in a deck that uh, normally is running Z Gate 0, the, the big 
So it's competing for a small scale, and I don't think DDs have a high scale that is high enough in order to actually pendulum some in this thing, which means there's no good way of getting this on the board. The first part of its pendulum effects is you cannot pendulum summon except for DDDs. Uh, okay, so it's locking you into the deck it's for. That's not the end of the world, however, uh, DDDs aren't really a pendulum deck. So, again, it, it suffers the same problem the Super Heavy Samurai's had, where, I don't know, it's a weird, weird card to give them. And this effect cannot be negated, so you can't do anything cute so that you can then pendulum something something else. Once per turn during your standby phase, increase this card's pendulum scale by two. Oh, well that's not very good. DDDs already have, I think, a couple level ones if I'm not mistaken, so if you're going to be pendulum summoning, you probably want to pendulum summon those, which this already stops you from doing, instead of just playing the I have a crush on my butthole! And if it increases its scales every turn, you're slowly but surely reducing the amount of ki like cards in your deck that you can pendulum summon. That's, that's, again, just a very awkward effect. Not to mention that when it does this, it destroys all monsters on your side of the field that have a level equal to or lower to this thing's current scale. So every time it gets a little bit higher in scale, it, it gets closer and closer to nuking everything in your deck. That's just really dumb. So as a pendulum scale, it's it's actually really terrible. Most of those effects are either negative effects or just super mediocre and you, I don't know why you'd want them. But it does have a monster effect. As a quick effect during either player's turn, you can discard this card, target one DD or dark contract on the field that you control and return it to your hand. You can only use this once per turn. Okay, so I guess you never needed a pendulum summon to begin with because it's, you know, you're discarding it because you certainly can't summon the damn thing. It is level 10. Play to trades. Obviously the uh, synergy here is I think you're supposed to like use its ability to, to save you life points when you're paying for your contracts. It, the deck already has ways of doing that and uh, you don't need to run a gigantic garnet. Pendulum cards are walls of text. Where am I gonna be able to fit all the memes and jokes into this video? Thank you for coming to see me in my butthole. Yuko Zuno Sumo Spirit. You know what deck needs pendulums? Spirits. A deck full of monsters that cannot be special summoned. Oh, uh, why though? A hey, level five. Ew, scale one. Okay, Wind Warrior. What do? As a pendulum effect, if a monster is pendulum summoned, return this card as a pendulum scale to your hand. I love how it just says, if a monster is pendulum summoned, not like if you pendulum summon. So like in a pendulum mirror, your opponent can bounce your scales simply by doing their dex mechanic. That's, I, why, why? What is its monster effect then? If this card is normal summoned, great, a pendulum monster that gets its effect off when it's normal summoned. You can send all monsters your opponent controls that are in the columns of your pendulum zones. So the far right and far left zone. And then it's got the normal spirit effect where it returns to your hand at the end of the turn. Could possibly give you a plus two in card advantage if your opponent is playing cards on their far right and far left. That almost sounds good, except you must realize that it is one of these terrible dumb effects where you can literally play around it. I don't mean like activate your cards in a certain order in order to bury your effects with like, you know, chain burying or something. No, you literally play around it by putting your cards in any zone except those two far ones. So which means that um, this will only ever work in game one, catching your opponent by surprise and they will just never do that again. Not to mention like it'd even be hard to set up to get the maximum advantage out of it because most people just summon to like the middle of the field. It'd be weird to like summon like your first monster to the rightmost zone or something. So like you might run into you never being able to resolve this card whether your opponent's playing around it or not because that's just a weird thing that people just don't seem to tend to do. So I'm not exactly sure what deck this is for. It has really no home. I have no idea. Great, we're back to the ones where I don't have any idea what the hell they're for. Proto plant spider orchid. First and foremost, Proto plants. Not really a pendulum deck, so they don't really use this very well. This seems to be the, the biggest thing with these like upper five is a lot of them, most of them rather, are just pendulum cards for a deck that doesn't really pendulum summon very well. So why do they exist? Level one, dark plant, scale eight, what do? Its pendulum effect is during the main phase of turn this was activated, you can destroy one spell or trap. So it's, 
It's a, it's a kind of an awkward MST, I guess. And a card that is more suited for the deck that is in, that wouldn't be the worst effect to have on a Pendulum Scale. Then, and its monster effect is during the end phase, if this was normal or special summon, you can discard one plant monster from your hand to add one level four or lower plant monster from your deck. Okay, so it's an end phase search that requires a discard that's just really slow and bad card advantage. And again, the deck has a very hard time using this card to begin with because it's not a pendulum deck. Into the pile of obscurity you go. Good thing there's no Edemai, 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 Edemian? Edemai, 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 Dudes with the spell counters. I never remember what that deck is called. I actually have to sit there and read them every single time. Form Pal Extra Slinger. Yes, even Performa Pals, the poster child for the Pendulum mechanic, are not spared this list. Actually, a couple of their cards could be on here because they got a ton of Pendulum support and a lot of it's actually really crappy. What's this thing do? Level three Dark Spellcaster. That typing would have been really awesome had it been in a, on a better card. Scale six is uh, not very useful for Performer Pals. It's not a high enough high scale. And its effects are just a bunch of cheesy burn damage. What do? As a scale, during your main phase, you can inflict 300 burn damage to your opponent for every face up monster in your extra deck. You cannot pendulum summon the turn you use this ability. <laughs> that's, that's weird. You play it to the field, use it as a pendulum scale, Use its ability, and now you can no longer Pendulum Summon. That'd be like a tuner that says you can't Synchro Summon. <laughs> it's unreliable burn damage, which is relying on the fact that uh, you are in an extremely losing position and your board's been cleared several times, and you have a stack sitting face up in your ash. Nice. What's his monster effect? Once per turn, you can banish a monster from your extra deck to destroy one Pendulum Scale on the field, and then do 3 to burn damage to your opponent. It's interesting that it doesn't need to be a face-up monster in your extra deck that you're banishing so you could potentially banish one of your Xyz. I don't know why you do that, but at least it's not dead. And if it's in like a pendulum mirror, it doesn't say your own, so you could destroy one of your opponent's scales and do 300 bird damage to your opponent. And that's cool, because then it's just like wish.com wavering eyes. Performer Pals have cards that do burn damage that serve them much better than this, and this is another one of those cards that are just going to be relegated to the Obscurity Zone. Ghost Beef and Mild Turkey. Ah yes, my favorite ghost girl hand trap. If you gotta pick one, let's pick turkey, because Ghost Beef's flavor text is at least the funnier of the two. Most of the list could have probably been a bunch of these dumb vanilla pendulum monsters, but that wouldn't have been very that wouldn't have been very interesting. However, I couldn't let the turkey boy get away with uh, that excuse because whole oh boy is this pendulum scale really bad effect. It's incredibly disrespectful. Once per turn, roll a six-sided die. Reduce this thing's pendulum scale by the result of the die. Ghost Beach is the other way around. Cool, a modulating pendulum scale based on a luck effect. For those of you new to the channel, uh, and maybe you've never seen me talk about competitive deck building strategies, the most important thing when you are building a deck to make it competitive is to reduce the amount of inconsistencies that deck has. Sure, having a massive power ceiling is really great, but if you can't make that play like ever, that's really bad. You'd be better off making the same good play every single turn than one great play every other turn. So when we're building a deck, we try to take out all the randomness as much as possible so that you are not as susceptible to drawing dead. So know it's a good way to make your deck better? Adding the randomness back in. I knew that was gonna be a shitty story. With a dumb die roll effect. And unlike other card games, Yu-Gi-Oh! It, it doesn't do the gamble cards well. Not only is this a gamble effect, which is inherently bad, uh, it's a gamble effect that all it's doing is modulating a pendulum scale, which is just a weird, you don't get anything for it. It, it, uh, it could just really screw up your, your pendulum summon. I guess the idea is that you had two high scales and you can hopefully turn this into a low enough low scale so that it unbricks your hand, but you could just, I don't know, play proper scale ratios in your deck and not play this dumb thing. Clearly a joke card, but it's also real bad. Here we go, Metronome. <laughs> Particularly good pun aside, Metronome has the following pendulum effect. Once per turn, you can target another card in a pendulum scale and make this thing scale equal to that scale. 
it's in a pendulum zone, so it, like it could be your opponent's. So if your opponent has pendulums too, which is unlikely in the modern format, but let's just pretend they do, you can turn this thing's crappy, crappy four scale into something that's actually going to help because a level four with a scale four is a special kind of crappy. Welcome back to crap. <laughs> There's nothing like a monster that can't pendulum summon itself. Meaning if you stick it in a scale, it makes the other copies in your deck super dead. Which is ironic with this card, because I think you're supposed to, or I think you're intended to use it in multiple copies. Because it's monster effect, if you have two cards in your pendulum zone with the same scale, this card's attack and defense become equal to that scale number times 100. Ah, so I think you're supposed to put like a big scale in one thing, put this thing in the other, have it target it, so you get two samey scales and then well, I guess you have to normal summon because you can't pendulum summon necessarily. Well, no, you can't. You can't pendulum summon because your scales are the same. That's so bad. So you normal summon it and make big number. Speaking of big number, look at the link in the description below and you too can have this awesome new Davinator brand big number t-shirt. I didn't put Metronome on the list just so I could plug the t-shirt. It just worked out that way. Thank you, Ryan, for the doodle on the shirt. But, uh, but yeah, Metronome is terrible. Anyway. All right, number two is actually my favorite card on the list because uh, it's bad. It's one of the worst pendulum cards in the game. However, it's almost cool, and that is almost cool. Pandora's Jewelry Box. <laughs> Another level four scale four. Stop it. However, it might be to this card's benefit in a weird way. It's Pendulum Effect. While you control no cards in your extra deck, you can target a card in your opponent's Pendulum Zone, destroy it, and then put this thing in their Pendulum Zone, effectively replacing one of their scales with this thing. Aha! That's the kicker. Because this thing's a scale four, which is one of the worst scales in the game, because it's right in the middle, maybe you can use it to give it to your opponent and then they can no longer pendulum summon because you've borked their deck by giving them a bum scale. That's cute. However, lots of pendulum decks have ways of destroying their own scales, so it's probably really not going to affect your opponent. And depending on the pendulum deck, that might not even hurt them. So if you're playing like true Dracos, because you must be, because you can't have an extra deck in order to get this thing to work. But why? You need to side this into your deck in the very specific scenario that your opponent is playing a very specific pendulum deck. Feels bad. Just play any spell. It's even a trap card. You contribute it. It's great. Okay, what's this monster effect? If you have uh, if you have no cards in your extra deck, you can draw two instead of one for your draw phase. Notice the best part about this. If you give it to your opponent and they blow it up, it goes back to your extra deck. So now you have something in your extra deck. So if you have any other copies in your hand, you can no longer get their monster effects off. That's real dumb. Like I said, it's it's almost cool because it's a clever out of the box way of hurting a pendulum deck giving them a bum scale. It's just, in practice, it's probably never really going to inhibit it very much. And that just makes the card kind of the worst side deck card ever and just bad. But at least points for thinking outside the box. All right, honorable mention, uh, or dishonorable, dishonorable, dishonorable mention. Speedroid Hexasaucer. Show me the sauce. Scale six, low four. Uh, uh, it's competing for a high scale, isn't it? In that, in in its own deck, the other, the other card's better, right? Oh, it's been a while since I've read these. Its pendulum effect says you can target a win synchro, win synchro, right? It's banished or in your graveyard. Stick it back in your extra deck. Cute, I guess. Nothing like uh, a recursion card that doesn't net you any real advantage. That's a nice utility effect. However, it's one of those kind of effects where it's like cool. When it's good, it's good, but it's kind of bad all the other times. So it's like, do I really want to devote a card in my deck to it? Okay, what's his monster effect? Both players take any battle damage involving this card, and all battle damage is halved. It's got 100 attack power, though. If it's destroyed in your pendulum zone, you can special summon a pendulum speedroid monster, right? Yes, it's pendulum speedroid monster from your extra deck. Fun fact, that special summon would be subject to the master rule five, meaning that it must go to a extra deck zone. Even though it's not an actual pendulum summon, it is still special summon from the extra deck, therefore, it must go to an open link zone. Feels bad, man. Not only that, but uh, with only 100 attack power, both people taking the damage and having that damage, I am not exactly sure what you're supposed to be doing with that. Crash it into something and hope it kills your opponent before it kills you? This card's best use would be if you're playing in a tournament and your opponent is just, just got like 
you know, uh, down paired, him beating you is already probably gonna make him bubble out. So what you do is you use this thing and you make it a draw. Nice record you got there, fam. Be a shame if I threw some draws on it. Good luck getting that regional top. 10 points for Gryffindor. It's at least trolley, I guess. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Number one on this list might be the worst pendulum card in the game, but it's also one of the worst cards in the game, period. And one of the strangest. Steel Calvary of Dinon. Dinon? Dinon? Dinon. You can't tell me it's not Dinon, because it's supposed to be Dino. <laughs> Even though that's not how English works. No pendulum effect. Absolutely none. It has a monster effect, though. So it's a uh, reverse vanilla. How strange. What's its monster effect? Uh, during the damage step of the thing battles a pendulum monster, half its attack and defense. That is so bad. It's like Dark Artist. It doesn't have a real effect, it just has a debuff against a certain thing in battle. So it's purely negative. The one thing this thing does have going for it though is a massive 2600 defense on a normal settable monster. With like no downside, really. Because, I mean, you're probably not playing against a pendulum deck, let's be real here. It might be one of the highest defense powers in the game on a normal settable monster, which means that it is the best worst opening ever. Strongest tea set I could make. Oh, that is not good. Also, it's a scale five. That real, real sweet right in the middle there. Mm, perfect. Can't pendulum summon a damn thing. The artwork's cool. It's a shame that we didn't get more of these like dino human people saurians. We didn't get more Saurians. Most of them aren't very good, but they're it, at least kind of their the artwork is neat. And maybe they would have made a fun vanilla dino pendulum deck at some point. I, I don't know. Anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you guys enjoyed it because uh, I certainly didn't. I have no idea what any of these even do. Wall of texts. I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player. We don't read. Join me next time for the, I guess it'd be worst links. Yes. And then after that, I think we're gonna take a break from this series and go back to the best cards in the main sets of the game because I haven't done one of those in a while, so that'll be really fun. And if you guys are new to the channel, uh, check out that playlist so you guys can get caught up. Yes, I'm going through the top 10 best cards in literally every single of one of the main sets. It's Let's get back at that schlog that I decided I needed to do. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta will, I'll see you guys next time. Well, 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 look who's back. Be sure to subscribe to the channel this time. Or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat?